This is a continuation of our final composition. We've created keyframes for the character through the main bone that moves the character around the scene, and we've tracked it with a kind of retarded camera just to keep him in the frame. Now, we don't have any way of tracking how fast this character is moving once we're off the grid, so we can increase the grid with the square bracket keys on the keyboard. It's the right square bracket, and if you take a look at the set view grid size here down at the bottom in the information line, we'll tell you how much it scales these up just so that we can see him moving around the scene and that he stays synchronized up. No matter how bad it looks, this is the curves that we're going to set up and we have to make the animation match these curves as best as possible. This is how it might work in real life or the director won't budge no matter how much you beg. And so I'll make the animation match the position that, have, that has been set forth. Go to Compose Mode. It's time to have some fun in here. Load our clips up. Right click on the Clips block. Load from the Motion folder all of our clips. Let's open those up. These clips are not matched up to the character, so go to the Match block. And the clips are in the right hand side. Pull down. Left hand side is our keyframing group. We're going to match all the items up, match by name, and run down the list. Now we might not use all of these depending on how creative you can get blending the clips that you have. But we've basically created an animation library and all we have to do now is assemble them correctly in the tracks. Let's create a new track. This track we are going to start off with the idle animation. Let's add the idle animation which of course he starts walking immediately so we can just shift the idle animation so that that's the start frame. And from the idle animation, once he starts on frame 1, we'll zoom in here and go down to the Dope Master and zoom in so that we can work in 100 frame increments. You can take a look here at the current item on the, on the Dope Master. You can tell where the keyframe starts and stops. Pick the track. Let's insert idle to walk. You see idle to walk actually looks like it's taking its own sweet time, so we might not even need idle in there. So get rid of the idle. This is where we can play around with large motions without having to mess around with other keyframes. Let's start the walk from where he goes on. Good, that, that looks like it's a good start. See if it matches up a little bit and we can scale this down. Take a look here at how much we scaled it you how fast he's supposed to walk. Just to keep him lined up. There we go. At the end of the walk, pick the track again, insert the walk. Walk goes in, he starts walking. Scale this walk down so that he stays lined up with the grid. And then right click and stretch this walk around. We can go back through and scale this again. Let's see if he stays lined up. He's going to walk pretty fast here. And if the camera movement's throwing you off, let's just switch to the top view and use the A key. We'll zoom in with the wheel mouse. Pay no attention to the camera clip. We can just Pick, let's see, go to animate, just pick main. Now we can see the curve that he walks along inside main. Let's look down here and see if his feet can line up again. So we can tell he's not lining up very well. Back into compose. Go through and mess with the lengths here to make it work. Also understand that there is a period of acceleration and deceleration. On, this, on these curves. There's no way to really tell how fast they are without looking into how the curves are acting. This isn't a straight line. We can't really gauge an acceleration or a deceleration without looking at it on a chunk by chunk basis. So he's walking along. Let's scale that down a little bit more. And by keyframing equally spaced keyframes, 
and making sure that they were equally timed on the timeline we can minimize the amount of acceleration and deceleration on here and just focus on getting these feet lined up so that's all I'm doing is I'm just scaling this down to see that the stride length matches up and it looks like we scaled this down so much that if we hit play he just does a really rapid movement so let's continue on so he walks, he looks like he's lining up pretty well. Let's go back to the camera view. He stops right there. Right click, let's extend that walk cycle here. And right where he hits this S curve, he's going to walk a little bit faster. So I'm just going to right click and stop it right at that keyframe on frame 100. Because we need to do a transition into a run cycle right now. So the run cycle create a new track. This track's going to be the run. So let's pick the run, insert the run. Now the walk cycle ended at an awkward frame. So let's extend the walk cycle until we get to another clip. Let's take this first run cycle. It's at a scale of one right now. So we synchronize those together, right mouse click to do a transition. And you see the transition was the length of the run instance here. So he's going to drop into the run. Then from here, Alt Middle Mouse to duplicate this clip, just like we did in previous tutorials, to create the repeating run cycle, which we'll right click and extend. So we can zoom out a little bit, right click, extend that. As he's running along, it looks like he's lining up pretty well because his feet are in the air most of the time, doesn't have any issues staying very aligned. So we can just right click and extend these run cycles going on here. As he stops, now that he's hit this spot here, he needs to transition back. So we can stop the run right there, create a new track. We're going to blend back to the walk on this one. So go back to the walk, insert this walk at the right timeline. I'm going to take this first walk, shuttle it down here. Control middle mouse click so that we can get our cyclable walk and our scalable walk. Let's extend this so that we have a section of, of a walk cycle we can blend back down to. So just as he gets ready to hit here, he needs to blend in. So our walk starts here. Right mouse click, make the transition from there. So let's extend this walk out. We didn't scale it. We used the right mouse click. Left mouse click and scale this walk down so that they stay synchronized. There we go. And then he goes to, to slow down to the walk. Now we move our repeatable walk in. Let's shorten that walk a little bit so that he stays lined up again. He walks a little bit slower on here. Right mouse click to extend that walk until we hit frame 275, which is where we pause. Let's go back to perspective mode, hit the A key, I'll zoom in with the wheel mouse. Continue aligning this character up, make sure he doesn't slide all over the place. I'm using the left mouse click to scale the animation so the animation speed will play make sure that his feet stay glued to the ground. And now he's slowing down. Let's right click, move that to frame 275. And while he's slowing down, we need to make sure to mix that down. Go back to the track, insert walk to idle. This walk to idle stops right there. Let's move this down to the nearest repeatable. And we can stretch that a little bit more here, see if we can't uh, cross blend between these two. So if we are halfway in the middle of an animation, like right here, 
or he could do a walk to idle and have it look correct. That's where our mirrored walk to idle goes into. So you can pick the instance, and you don't have to delete this instance and add a new one. Just change the clip to the walk to idle mirror. So as he goes through now, now the walk to idle mirror goes in, and we can change that to his movement. So let's line this up here. Go to our walk instance. We have our mix going on. If we want to keep that mix, let's keep that mix until he starts to slide. So he's not sliding here, but now he's starting to slide here. Middle mouse click, let's create a mix. We'll mix a percentage of this down or up. We may have to mix it up just a little bit. And you can right mouse click, move these over here. So you can see where it, where it pops as we go through here. Middle mouse click, let's move that walk to mirror to a new track. We can move it down here if we can. There it is. Then right mouse click and pull a transition on there so that he can do a, a blend between the two. So he can do a bailout. Anywhere in this walk. So let's check our animation here. Let's go back to the camera view. Let's hit play. He walks along the animation, then he stops. So he starts the walk. When he crosses over that center line, he goes into the run, he fades back down to the walk, and then stops. So if we wanted to change the timing of this, we could go through and retime everything. Just set it to 15 frames a second. It looks like he's walking correctly. I know, that's pretty cheap. But the whole point of this was we were able to blend, using just a few animations, everything in, to get this character to move. So now let's layer the animations together. We didn't have to do too many percentage mixes. We just had to do cross blends to get the character to move from one state to the other, the walk to the run. We used a percentage blends to get the character to transition correctly from one state and we used our mirror idle to bail out in the middle of a walk cycle to get him to the correct spot since we wound up in a position where the cycles did not line up at the very end of the cycle clip. Let's go to file and we will save this scene as dinofinalcompb.fxs.